Welcome back everyone. Today, let's cover an introduction to factoring. So what is a factor? A factor are two or more numbers you can multiply together to get another number. If we look at the factors of 24, there are a few possibilities. We could do two factors, 2 and 12, those multiply to 24. Three factors, 2, 2 and 6, they also multiply to 24. Or if we prime factor, the four factors 2, 2, 2, and 3 also multiply to 24. Now, a common factor is a monomial that's common to each term in a polynomial. And even more important with factoring is the GCF, or the greatest common factor. The GCF is a common factor with the greatest coefficient in highest degree. Remember that a coefficient is just a number, and the highest degree is talking about the variable. So when we factor something like x, or x squared, we want to pull out the largest number of that variable. So the degree for x squared is 2. Let's look at a couple of examples. So identify the GCF, then factor the expression. For example 1, we have two terms. The first term is 3y squared, and the second term is 12y. If we factor the first term, we see that 3y squared is the same as 3 times y times y. And the second term, 12y, factors to 3 times 4 times y. Now, what do these two terms have in common? Well, they share a 3 and they both have a y. So 3 times y, or 3y, is our GCF. Now if we factor out our GCF, the first term leaves behind a y, and the second term leaves behind a positive 4. So our factored form is 3y times y plus 4. Now let's look at example 2 where we have three terms. Our first term, 2z cubed, factors to 2 times 3z's. The second term, 8z squared, factors to 2 times 4 times 2z's. And the third term, negative 4z, factors to negative 1 times 2, times 2, times z. Now we use the same process, but we look at all three terms and see what all three of them have in common. Notice that they all have a 2, and they all have a z. So our GCF here is 2z. And if we factor out that GCF, the first term leaves behind a z squared, z times z. The second term leaves behind a positive 4 times a z, or plus 4z. And the third term leaves behind negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. How about a couple more examples? Remember, we're going to identify the GCF and then factor the expression. In example three, we have four terms. We can just do the same thing, write out all four terms. The first, 5y to the fifth, is 5 times 5y's. The second term is 10y to the fourth. 10 is 2 times 5, and y to the fourth is 4y's. Four the third term, minus 15y cubed is a negative 1 for the negative sign, and 15 is 3 times 5. And y cubed? Yep, 3 y's. And then our last term, 10y squared, well 10 is 2 times 5, and y squared is y times y. Again, the same process. To find our GCF, we look at all four terms and identify what they have in common. 
in terms of coefficients, they each have a 5. So we factor out the 5. Now, what's the most number of y's they have in common? Yeah, 2. So we have y times y, or 5y squared for our GCF. When we factor out 5y squared, what got left behind with that first term? Well, y times y times y, or y cubed. And the second term? A positive 2 and y times y, or positive 2y squared. That third term? Well, the coefficient is negative 1 times 3, which is negative 3 and a y got left behind, so negative 3y. And our fourth term, we only left behind a positive 2. Now let's look at example 4. Here we have three terms and we have two variables, a and b. We'll use the exact same process. The first term is a squared b. That factors to a times a times b. The second term is a b squared, which factors to a times b times b. And the last term is a b, which is just a times b. So what do all three of these terms have in common, or what is our GCF? Well they all have an a, and they all have a b. If we factor out that GCF of a times b, the first term left behind an a, and the second term left behind a positive b. Now look at that third term. It looks like nothing got left behind, right? That's not true. Remember, even if there isn't a coefficient in front of your variables, there's always the coefficient of 1. So what got left behind here is plus 1. Remember, when you factor, your factor should have just as many terms as what you started with. So when we factored out our GCF, we went from three terms to three terms. Remember, after factoring, you can always check your answer by using the distributive property. If we distribute a times b to the first term, we get a squared b. And we distribute it to the second term, and we get a positive a b squared. If we didn't add that positive 1 to the end, our answer wouldn't match what we started with. But when we distribute a times b to that coefficient of 1, we get the plus AB. Math is great because you can always check your answer. So when you factor, always use the distributive property and check your answer. Now that we've mastered GCFs, let's move on to factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping uses the associative and the distributive properties to factor four-term polynomials into the product of two binomials. Let's look at example one. Example one, we have two terms. One, two. Notice that these two terms each have two factors. And specifically, they both have the factor z plus five in common. If we factor out that binomial, z plus five, we're left with a binomial z plus 4. Now let's look at a more complicated example where they haven't started the grouping for us. So example 2, we have four terms and we need to group those terms in order to factor. First, we always want to check to see if there's a GCF. 
Well, the last term doesn't have an x, so we know they don't have a variable in common. And the second term is 3, which is not a common factor for 2 or 4. So we don't have a GCF here. So our first step is to use the associative property and to group. We're going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. So that will give us 2x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 4x minus 6. Now we're going to look at each grouping separate and factor it. So what's the GCF of our first grouping? Yeah, x cubed. So if we factor out x cubed, left behind is 2x minus 3. Now we look at our second grouping, and the GCF here is 2. You factor out the 2, and you're left with 2x minus 3. Now look what we have. We're down to two terms, and both terms have this binomial in common, 2x minus 3. If we factor out that 2x minus 3, we're left with another binomial, x cubed plus 2. Let's look at a couple more examples. In example 3, we have four terms, so we're going to factor by grouping. And first, we need to look to see if we have a GCF. Well, do they have a coefficient in common? 3, 6, 3, 6? Yeah, they all have a 3 in common. So we can factor out a 3. Now what about variables? The first term has x cubed, second is x squared, the third is x, but the fourth term doesn't have an x, so we don't have any variables in common. So our GCF is only 3. We're going to factor out the 3, and left behind we have x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. Now we're going to use the associative property to group those four remaining terms. So we keep our GCF and we group x cubed plus 2x squared, and then x plus 2. Now we look at our first grouping and identify the GCF of that grouping. So what do x cubed and 2x squared have in common? An x squared. So we factor out the x squared, and here we're left behind with an x plus 2. Now let's look at the second grouping. Notice that it's the binomial x plus 2, which is also the binomial we have from our first grouping. So we don't need to factor. We're going to use that binomial of x plus 2. And remember, even if there isn't a coefficient in front, we can always insert the coefficient of 1. Now don't forget to bring down your GCF of 3. Now we have to look at the remaining two terms and factor out the binomial x plus 2 that they have in common. We factor out the x plus 2 and we're left with the binomial of x squared plus 1 and we bring down our GCF of 3. Now we factored example 3 to 3 times x plus 2 times x squared plus 1. Let's look at another example. Notice that in this example, the middle term has a negative sign. We're not used to seeing a negative sign. We can rewrite that negative sign as a plus the opposite. So 4x to the fifth plus 2x to the fourth plus the opposite 
which is negative 12x cubed minus 6x squared. Now we use the same process we did in example 3. What's our GCF? Well, the greatest common factor of these four terms is the coefficient 2 and the variable x squared. We factor out the 2x squared and our four terms become 2x cubed plus x squared plus negative 6x minus 3. Now again, we use the associative property to rewrite those four terms within our bracket. Bring down your GCF, 2x squared. Our first grouping is 2x cubed plus x squared plus our second grouping, which is negative 6x minus 3. Now we factor each of those groupings. So the GCF of 2x cubed plus x squared is x squared. We factor out x squared. The first term becomes 2x plus the second term, which is 1. Now the second grouping. The GCF here is a negative 3. So we factor out the negative 3 and the first term becomes 2x and the second term a plus 1. Close that off with brackets and bring down our GCF. And look, the groupings both factored out a binomial of 2x plus 1. So if we pull out that 2x plus 1, the binomial that's left behind is x squared minus 3. Bring down your GCF and you have your final factored form of 2x squared times 2x plus 1 times x squared minus 3. Now we factored by grouping. Have a question or a factoring problem you want help with? Leave it in the comments and I'll include it in one of my videos. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel for more math tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time.